welcome to this special edition of Hello Ethiopia TV. Today, Ethiopian and Eritrean American filmmaker, journalist, actor, and storyteller Salome Mulageta interviews United States Representative Connor Lamb, Congressman for Pennsylvania's 17th District and candidate for Senate. Salome Mulageta speaks with Congressman Lamb from the perspective of a filmmaker, storyteller, and journalist. Let's listen in to Congressman Lamb and Salome Mulageta. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation uh, to come and speak to me. I really appreciate it. Um, sure, you, know, you know, the Ethiopian community was so happy in Pennsylvania that you actually met with APAC representative in Pennsylvania. And also, I believe you met with the African community um, in Philadelphia to hear That's their right. concerns. Right. So they're really happy, which is why they reached out to me. So my question to you is, uh, if elected, will you make some time to actually hear their concerns if they have any? Absolutely. I mean, and that's what we were doing um, when we met with them a couple of weeks ago. And, and that's just the way that I do business. You know, I, I'm in the Democratic Party, as you know, and really what we believe at its core is that everybody deserves a shot at an equal opportunity in America. Um, and that everybody deserves to be listened to and have, have their voice heard. And that's why we stand up for voting rights. It's why we stand up for, you know, the basic economic rights like minimum wage and labor unions. And a big part of that as well is, is showing up in real life to listen to everybody, no matter who they are, or where they come from, whether they are political donors or not, whether they're new Americans or they've been here for 100 years or more. Um, everybody deserves to have a, a say in this whole thing. It's what's supposed to make our country special. So... Uh, absolutely. I, I got a good education from uh, the community members that were there a couple of weeks ago, and I'm looking to continue the conversation. Wonderful. Okay, Congressman, as you know, there are over 120,000 Ethiopian, Eritrean, Caribbean, African diaspora that currently live in Pennsylvania. The midterms are coming up very soon in November 2022. But before that, we have the primaries. You have yours coming up next week. May 17th, and your opponent is the Lieutenant Governor of Pennsylvania. So please tell our audience why they should vote for you as opposed to your opponent. The biggest difference between us um, is, is in terms of experience. And so um, he has been serving at the statewide level in our state, but he's never had to actually win an election other than a Democratic primary. That's just the way that the Lieutenant Governor job works in Pennsylvania. My job is different in that I had to go into a congressional district that actually really favors the Republican Party and win it as a Democrat, which meant um, that I had to get really used to showing up and answering every question of every group, no matter who they were. So just like I met with the African community last week, you know, I started my career going down to meet with coal miners um, and meet with, you know, white evangelicals and, and all these people who may be skeptical of a Democrat like me or someone that they didn't know. But we found that when we got the conversation started and I was willing to respect their point of view and give them an honest answer about what I thought could be achieved in Washington, I started picking up a lot of support. And so that's how I learned to be a good advocate and representative for people is always showing up, never ducking the question, always being transparent with people. Um, and then I think on, on policy, there's a, there's a question of priorities. So, you know, the lieutenant governor is very well known for going all over our state and talking about marijuana. Um, and I, I don't think that's an unimportant issue by any means, but, but my top priorities are the basic sort of costs that are in every single family's budget. So uh, the cost of childcare is very high and young families are having a hard time being able to both take care of their kids and work. Um, public education in our state is still not fairly funded. So your zip code has way too much to do with the quality of education that you're going to get and what happens to you in life. Um, you know, even things like, Social Security benefits, which uh, are very important to keep seniors from falling into poverty. Uh, as inflation, you know, the cost of things goes up and up and up. The Social Security benefits have stayed the same. And I'm really trying to help us increase those so that seniors can actually afford to, you know, enjoy their years after they spend a lifetime building this country. So I'm very focused on kind of the, just the, the, the really basic things that every family needs to be able to survive and thrive in this country. Okay, wonderful, which is what the Ethiopian diaspora community uh, hoped in 2020 and went out in droves to basically vote for the Biden administration 
and also for the Democratic Party, but they were let down because of the sanctions uh, the Biden administration imposed. One, that's actually implemented, AGWA. There are two uh, on the table, uh, HR 6600 and S3199. Uh, Congressman, I don't know if you voted for these sanctions. Uh, did you? Or, or if you did, why? If not, why not? You know what? I, I don't. I don't know that we've voted on those in the House yet. Since I've been there, I have to check. Um, but I think, in general, on these topics, um, you know, you, what your what your viewers should know about me is representing my current district in Western Pennsylvania. This has not been a big issue. So, what I can promise you is, if if I become a senator. Um, what a senator can really do for you in this situation is get access to the information and really demand answers behind this decision making. So like a lot of you, I don't really know why the Biden administration made the decision that they did on these sanctions. But what I can do um, is use the, the authority of the office of senator to force them to answer the kinds of questions that the community has. I would guess that you probably haven't gotten access to people in the State Department or answers as to their thinking. Um, but I can commit to you that, that I would make sure we can get those kind of answers and really question the decision making to understand the impact. So um, that's probably the most I can say now, because again, it's just, I haven't been in, inside this type of decision making up to this point. So I don't know the whole story about why they're doing what they're doing, but I can make sure that we get your community some answers. Okay, thank you. Actually, you just answered it. I was going to ask you, what would you do if you get elected to cancel these sanctions? You kind of did uh, answer it, but if yeah, you and I can more... elaborate on that so that people don't always understand kind of what the what the roles are of, of different people in different parts of the government. But you know, a big part of what the Senate does, and this is different between the Senate and the House, the two sides of the legislature. The Senate really has a lot of authority when it comes to our foreign relations, our, our relationships with other countries. And they have kind of an oversight role of the way that the State Department makes decisions. And so one of the things that you can do as a senator is demand that the Secretary of State or one of their deputies answer in a congressional hearing very specific questions about the reasoning that went into a decision like this and whether they're even aware of the effects that it's having on your friends and family members back in Ethiopia. You know, that's the, the big question for me is I've been able to meet many members of the community who've talked about the way that average people are paying the price for this. And I can guarantee you that that is not really what the government intends on our side. But as you know, large organizations sometimes can be blind to the effects of their decisions. And so we can use the oversight power of this Senate office to really raise these questions and demand that they consider changing their approach if it really is harming a lot of innocent people, as many of you have told me. Okay, so if elected, how would you convince your colleagues to come on board on the issues Ethiopian Americans have? Well, I think it is by, by really getting the facts out there. So that's kind of what these congressional hearings, um, you know, the background job of making phone calls and pressuring these officials to give you some answers. Um, if, the, if the case is as clear cut as many of you believe it is, and if we, you know, there's a there's unfortunately a history in American foreign policy. If sometimes we make decisions intending one thing, but we actually just make countries a lot more mad at us and, and we end up turning them against us over time. The Iraq war is sort of an example of that, where I think, um, you know, a lot of people in the Mid Middle East were left even angrier at the United States for making a decision that, that I think are, at the time our government probably intended to help the Middle East overall. But we don't want this decision in Ethiopia to play out that way. And so I think if we're able to show that uh, innocent Ethiopians are being harmed by these things and that that actually hurts the American interest because it could drive Ethiopia closer to China or closer to Russia, uh, yeah. that would be a way that, that the, I think the senators would probably change their way of thinking. Okay. What about convincing the Ethiopian community in Pennsylvania that you'll stand up for them? Well, I think the, the first thing is that the reason I'm in front of you right now is because I've sought out your community and really wanted to earn your support. Um, and, and I think that's probably unique among the three candidates on, on the Democratic side of this race. Um, secondly, is, is you should know about me if, if you know people that serve in the military in this country. I, I served in the Marine Corps, which is a, a smaller and kind of more specialized branch of the military. 
and our our motto is always faithful. Semper Fidelis is, is in line. Um, I do what I say I'm going to do. That's how I've been as a member of Congress. And so uh, one of the things that I always do is I hold town halls or opportunities for people to come out and ask me any question that they want. There's nothing off limits. And I've always found that as long as you have that level of accountability and transparency, um, it's, it's able to restore the trust that people should have in their government to understand that we really are working for you every day and we're willing to answer questions and, and be your advocate. And I think over time, we could build that relationship together. All right. Last but not least, what would you want the Ethiopian community to know about you, particularly the ones in Pennsylvania, so they can vote for you next week? You know, what I told the, the group that I met with uh, last week was, um, you know, a hundred years ago, roughly, uh, the situation that my family was in was not all that different. It was different, obviously, but, but our family came from Ireland and um, didn't have a whole lot. And one of the things that happened was when World War II started, a whole generation of, of men, in particular white men, um, were able to not only serve in the military and get paid and get trained and all that, but they were given something called the GI Bill afterward to get their education paid for. They were given uh, low-cost mortgages to buy houses, and they were given health care at a very affordable rate. And as a result of making those investments in that generation of people, they all... Uh, you know, really prospered in this country and they raised families and had kids and contributed to their communities. And it, it's, it's a successful example of why it's so important that America not only takes in immigrants and accepts them, um, but actually invests in them too. It gives them a public education that's worth the standards of excellence that our country should have and makes housing more affordable for people and makes it so that a trip to the doctor doesn't bankrupt you. Your community deserves that just as much as, as my family did. And one of the failings of this country is we haven't not extended that, those same opportunities to enough people. Obviously, we don't have a World War II today, but we still have just as much of a need to make sure that everyone gets a fair chance to be educated and make something out of the education that they get. And so what you'll get with me uh, is an understanding that every day when I get up to go to work, uh, I want your families to have the exact same opportunities that my family has had and that I hope my family will have. I have a one-year-old son and a daughter arriving next month. Um, oh, and I want my kids to get these same opportunities too. And I'm going to think about your kids the same way I think about my own kids. All right. Sounds wonderful. And thank you, Congressman Lamb. For our art, history, culture and entertainment section, we wish to leave you with a special message about the scale of the times. Will we tip the scales in our favor as a human race or fail humanity at home in America or at home in our native countries? It is a critical time in America, a time to vote. In the coming midterms in November, Americans have the chance, literally, to change the political landscape of the United States. All 435 seats in the U.S. House of Representatives and 35% of the Senate seats will be contested. The primaries have begun and winners will affect midterms. Voters have a chance to take a look at candidates and decide who will best serve their interests. Candidates who have the potential to win a primary and make or break how politics affect their interests. We've watched the piles of human remains exhumed in Ethiopia, mostly Amhara. The US government has imposed sanctions on Ethiopia that forced many Ethiopians to their jobs and more sanctions, HR 6600 and S3199, presumably on hold. The US government has presented a pro-TPLF terrorist group bias in Ethiopia instead of denouncing a deadly regime that has ruthlessly ruled Ethiopia for decades. On April 27, 2022, 
Bill H.R. 7311 passed in the House of Representatives and was referred in the Senate on April 28th. In part, the bill seeks to assess and counter Russian influence on voting practices of African diaspora, including in America. As overwhelming as the current political climate may be, diaspora have the power to make a difference in how the U.S. government affects Ethiopia, Eritrea and the Horn of Africa. It is time to make a difference for the better. It is time to vote for leaders who will be on your side. Thank you for watching. Please share the story and our other stories. Like with a thumbs up and subscribe today by clicking the subscription button below to be in the know with Hello Ethiopia Stories, your channel for English, Ethiopian and Eritrean news, art, culture, history and entertainment. Subscribe and play our HETV subscription referral competition. Details in the description. Join us on this Friday for what's happening in Ethiopia. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share.